launch of the Welsh Government's digital strategy has set the ambition and focus for Wales. There's a clear vision in place. Digital in Wales, improving the lives of everyone through collaboration, innovation and better public services. As importantly, this strategy is accompanied by a delivery plan and actions that will deliver better outcomes for the people of Wales. We're starting to see organisations from the public, third and private sectors working together, finding solutions, sharing knowledge and experiences and joining up the dots. We're starting to see a focus on skills and capability and the opportunity to create a workforce that has the digital skills, capability and confidence to excel in the workplace and in everyday life. There's an increased recognition that digital is not all about technology. It's about designing services around the needs of your users. It's creating an organisation with the culture for change to succeed. And ultimately, it's about people. Today's lecture is delivered in that context, focusing on the services the public sector delivers to the people of Wales. Over the last 18 months, local authorities have been at the forefront of the response to COVID-19 here in Wales, working in communities, delivering services to the people who need them. It's therefore a pleasure to introduce you to Sam Hall, the Chief Digital Officer for Local Government in Wales, who's delivering this year's lecture. Thank you, Sam. Dioch. Dioch, thanks, Victoria, Parago and Digital Leaders for inviting me to speak today. I've attended many digital leaders events and always found them interesting and enlightening and often inspiring. Uh, but I'm not a lecturer, far from it, but I do like talking as most people who work with me will say. And I especially like talking about Wales and digital. So hopefully you'll hear something interesting and enlightening today. Um, and also more importantly, I promise to finish in plenty of time for football, uh, which is uh, hotting up now in uh, Baku. Um, I'm going to start by being totally self-indulgent and talk a little bit about how I got here and why I'm so lucky to combine two of my biggest passions, digital and Wales. I'm Welsh born and bred and I've always wanted an opportunity to do something for Wales. So if you add my love of Wales and digital to my 30 odd years of public service, you'll, you'll start to understand why I've got the best job in the world. For the last 20 years of my career, the, the focus has been on two things, making the most of digital opportunities and learning more about people the more we learn about people, the better we can design and develop tools for the future. And my last job, in big, my last big job in central government was working on the 2021 census transformation programme. The census was a very paper-based production with millions of questionnaires sent out, lots of boots on the ground chasing up respondents. And after we'd collected it all, it needed to be processed, analysed in a variety of different ways. And then when it was ready to be shared, we had to create masses of CD-ROMs containing huge spreadsheets due to the size and shape of the data. And it literally took years to release it all. I worked on the programme to move it to what we had this year, which was a slicker online version with paper only as a backup. We should see the initial output to the census much more quickly because of the built-in and joined up processes behind the scenes. But it's fair to say that we didn't wait for 10 years to elapse and then just decide to put the census online. In the intervening years between 2021 and 20 between 2011 and 2021, we did huge amounts of user research and behavioural analysis before putting a raft of other surveys online and iterating them over a couple of years. We did enough to give ourselves and our users confidence that the small scale versions we were building could be scaled and could be exploited at the huge level needed to sense us. We were enabling the future, even if it might not have felt like it at the but I think it's hugely important for Wales right now, and it's something I'll touch on later, that enabling for the future. Following on from the civil service for almost 30 years, I wanted to do something different, but still in the public sector. If there was a real driver, it was being closer to people and seeing how they affect them and how we can approve them in a way which, which doesn't jar too much with their expectations of what the service does. Local government seemed like a perfect option, and I was lucky enough to be offered a brilliant role as Chief Information Officer and Assistant Director for IT and Digital at Birmingham City Council. So for the first foray into local gov, picking the biggest council in Europe was probably not the smartest idea I've, I've ever had, but it was one of the most utterly rewarding. In Brum, there are 12,000 people working to deliver services to 1.2 million citizens. And for added spice, I started the job less than three months before lockdown. Birmingham is an incredible place with a vibrant and diverse citizenship, which is strongly reflected in the people working in the council. 
Again, something really important for Wales. It's much simpler to design and deliver services for citizens when your organisation mirrors them. The combined thought processes and decision making from a diverse team just adds authenticity to the outcome, and, which is hugely appreciated by our citizens. And anyway, a, a personal piece of advice for me. If you know you need a change and you're going to make a move, make it a seismic one. Honestly, it was a baptism of fire, but I think I've learned as much in the last 14 months as I did in the previous 14 years. And that last 14 month statement is something I'm hearing from folks, not just digital and tech folks either, but people who have just become more digitally accustomed since COVID. They're now saying things like, it's just how we do things now. And it's much easier than I thought it was. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. They're not digitally native overnight or even super confident or comfortable, but they are now accustomed to doing things in a new way. And we have a great opportunity to build on that in the coming months as we try to bounce back from the pandemic. That's a bit about me and now a bit about Wales. This is an actual lecture bit. Wales has got 3.1 million citizens, 22 local authorities. 28% of us speak, write or understand Welsh. One in five of us have got a disability. Just under six of us are from a, a BAME community. Pre-COVID, the Joseph Rowntree Foundation estimated that 700,000 people in Wales were living in poverty, or about a quarter of us. And for children, that figure's closer to one in three. Post-COVID, that figure's likely to be worse. And half a million of us in Wales are over 70, my mum included. It was her birthday on Friday, and hello, mum, if you're here. She's not. Those are important figures for my team. We know them off by heart. They help us have conversations with local authority teams and help us to illustrate what we're all working towards and who we're working for. A couple of other things worth noting for local authorities is the World Health Organization ranked Wales as 32nd out of 800, and, sorry, after 184 countries for life expectancy. And that's a good thing. But if you look at it from a council position, it means we really need to understand and develop how we can keep people independent, hopefully living at home longer, but at the same time dealing with issues of loneliness and isolation and the growing cost of social care as we age. As a Generation Xer, this is becoming a real consideration for me. Is Wales a good place to get old in? And will it be even better in the next 20 or 30 years? A lot of that depends on the council services. Leaders of those services need to be planning now for how the services will handle a larger age and citizenship. And we need to develop our relationships with partners and colleagues in the charity sector who are brilliant at supporting the structural council services with those essential services that wrap around them. Another thing worth noting is according to Welsh Government tourism stats in 2019, there were 10.6 million overnight visits to Wales, and that's just domestic travellers from inside Britain. There were 87 million day trips made to Wales, so it's no wonder you can never park at Barry Island. And over a million overseas visitors made trips to Wales, spending £515 million. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, those numbers have fallen off a cliff. Councils around Wales have supported businesses throughout the last 14 months, and now we'll be doing more to help them re-establish themselves, including digital marketing, setting up promotional websites and support services behind them. There'll also be initiati initiatives looking at hyper-local exploitation of services, tailored to tourists who literally aren't going far, but who want to feel safe and really need a break that can take them away from the COVID lockdown lethargy that's affecting all of us. Both of these challenges are very real and very now, and we all need to find sustainable, cost-effective, accessible ways to deliver services in support of them. Basically, we just have to add them to the already enormous list of services that local authorities across Wales deliver every single day. I've already talked about me, but there is a brief but important history to how my role came about in Wales. It was triggered by the system reboot paper written in 2018 by Lee Waters, who was the assembly member for Llanelli. It was a really interesting paper. It highlighted the growing gap between expectation and user need and the reality of how services were being delivered. The executive summary mentioned the creation of three chief digital officers, one for Welsh Gov, which has been around for a few years already, one for health in Wales and one for local government. There also, there also needed to be an overarching role that pulled public service together and looked across our different digital flavours for synergy, dependency and common goals. And this is where the Centre for Digital Public Service under the leadership of Sally Meacham has really filled that gap 
but we're all working to navigate a way through the public service digital maze and bring benefit to all sectors. It's important to say that things haven't stopped between the reboot paper and my joining local government, quite the opposite. The position reflected in the paper had moved on. However, it wasn't a consistent move across all authorities in Wales and the level to which any momentum could be sustained was unknown. But there has certainly been development and there has certainly been innovation and there has over, been an overwhelming commitment to deliver services in the way that citizens really need to access them. I believe that the ecosystem formed by the three CDOs, CDO roles and the leadership within the centre shows a massive desire to grow Wales as a digital nation and to drive forward the seven goals in the well, Wellbeing of Future Generations Act in Wales. And those seven principles around prosperous Wales, resilient Wales, a more equal Wales, healthier Wales, a Wales of cohesive communities, one of vibrant culture and thriving Welsh language, and to be glo globally responsible. That act is, is accessible to everyone and resonates with people I speak to in the local authorities. They, they totally get why those things are important. And they get it because they are the people they serve. Local authority staff are part of a community in Wales. They often tend to live in the authority they work for, and even when they don't, their family and friends do. Wales isn't that big. When council teams solve a problem, improve a service or take a pain away, they're really doing it for people like them. And that's a huge strength of local government, the determination and the ability to see things change really quickly in your locality. So where are we now and, and what's changing exactly? Well, since taking up this role at, at the end of last year, it's been a really eventful six or seven months. We started to build a small team of digital folk who are going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting over the next year or so. And because of this, I recruited not just for digital delivery experience, but for talent, enthusiasm and spirit. I was going to use the word gumption there, but I'm not Barbara Cartland, so I think I'll stick with spirit. There are going to be times when the task seems too big or the route too complicated, but I wanted a team that would relish that challenge and be able to demonstrate that to our colleagues across the local authorities, many of whom are juggling being innovative and forward thinking with delivery, just what could be done today and the next day and tomorrow. My team have had to be able to help make things happen. They have to be an informed and credible source of advice and sometimes just be able to throw an arm around people and projects and give them a coach or a hug for our non-Welsh friends. We're not there to tell them not to do something or even how to do it or what to spend on it. But we're there to be an active voice of challenge, reasoning and support. But we must do that in a way that local teams want to invest their time and effort back in us as much as we do in them. My team spent a few months collecting lots of data from surveys. We, we are data geeks in my team. Um, so we, get, we got lots of data from surveys, focus groups, workshops and one-to-one -one chats to help us better understand where the challenges and opportunities were. We collated information from council plans and strategies. We looked at the political imperatives of the elected membership and the authorities, and it's a complex landscape. And I think we've only scratched the surface, but it gave us a place to start from and to build from. And it's something we will continue to do as things change and needs develop. What we got from the research was some consistent challenges and concerns coming through, along with some clear priorities and visions. And these won't, these challenges, they won't be unique to Wales and they probably resonate with most of the people uh, watching this lecture, but getting the right workforce for the future is, seems to be the top of most people's list. This is much about creating the right environment for new digital tech and data roles to flourish, as it is about ensuring the whole workforce across the council doesn't see digital and tech as something over there that those folks do, but as just how they do business now. It's part of everyone's role, be that in a digital development team or emptying bins, whether you're working in code and systems or using GPS to plan the most fuel efficient route for your bin wagon, it's digital. And it's not acceptable for the workforce to say, I don't do digital. 99% of them will bank online, be ordering on Amazon or commenting on Facebook. Not doing digital in work isn't a thing anymore. And it really hasn't been a thing since the late nineties. We just need to change the narrative around it and help people to see that they do do digital and that they are digital every day. But we need to say it in a way that's supportive and not in a way that makes them think that what they do is valuable if they don't think of digital first. There's a, there's a worry of legacy technology leading to a legacy workforce. We've got lots of people keeping the councils running. They've invested time, effort, blood, sweat and tears in keeping council systems running. 
that doesn't give a lot of time for upskilling and change in discipline or just working out what else needs to be done. If you're a fan of the DevOps model like me, then you know the benefit of working on developments and taking them right away through to live. That's really hard if you're nursing some of the elderly systems that councils are reliant on. The first cut is the deepest. How do you cope when the cuts keep coming? The extended period of austerity we've been through has cut spending and in turn cut investment in development. Savings targets have been set, digital solutions that could be the answer to plenty of cost savings, don't have, have enough funding and often fall short of affecting lasting change. And digital and tech teams have had to make staff cuts to meet spending reductions. This is a, a, a sad position to be in, but actually it's been recognised that investment in digital can make the situation much better in the longer term. And more recently, we're hearing that money for digital and tech is there, along with the support and commitment from the most senior levels, which is a very good position to be in for Wales. And One Direction, no, not the boy band. But if COVID taught us one thing, it was having One Direction and one agreed priority was priceless. Everyone moved in the same direction. We made sharing easier. We put disagreements aside. We innovated at an incredible pace. And now, in the almost nearly post-COVID world, teams across Wales have been told that they have a list of priorities again. And as we all know, there's always a list of priorities. The hard part and the hard and the part we need to do more to make happen is prioritising the priorities. In a list of 50 priorities, there has to be a number one and a number 50. And we need to do more work to help council officers and elected members with this prioritisation. It's an effort worth making as ultimately we will benefit from that clearer direction. And we're playing catch up on a lost year. We hear a lot about the NHS and, and how they will come out of COVID with a massive backlog of operations and treatment that could take years to manage and resolve. Councils too will have a backlog. The service developments that were due to happen have all been stacking up while staff were deployed on COVID related activities. Business as usual hasn't been business as usual for a long time. And these backlogs need dusting off so we can work out what's really necessary and what we frankly have learned to live without during the COVID period. And we need to take the opportunity to keep moving and improving. Councils were majestic at putting services online. They really were. Citizens were brilliant at making the changes to how they deal with us. We've moved councils and channel shift forward possibly years. However, now we're looking at these services and realising that some of them were stop gaps. They did the job. But if we want our diverse citizen base to continue to use them, then they need to be developed, scaled and made more robust. And for that, we need to make time to do the research and invest in the services that are staying and need to be better. Talk about being better. We really need to be better customers. I've negotiated some big deals in my time and it's terrifying. I've worked with most of the big tech companies in the marketplace and I've stamped my feet wanting something specific in a contract. And then I've gone crying to my commercial lead because it's not gone how I expected it. Buying things and buying complicated, expensive things on behalf of councils and citizens doesn't always go well. Sometimes it's a third party and sometimes it's us, but we have to be much better at specifying our requirements and leaving little room for ambiguity or we won't get what we want. And we buy a lot of the same things across Wales, not just in local gov, but in the wider public sector. Leveraging contracts at scale would put us in a much better position with large vendors. It would also save across the board on procurement time and effort, which is going on constantly. But this is going to take coordination, and, but the benefit should outweigh the effort it takes to agree, simply to agree by some significant way. And I think to the last point, we need to back ourselves. We don't build a lot ourselves. And at the same time, we know that lots of the off the shelf solutions aren't always a great fit and cost a lot of money. We spend plenty of time working around them and filling gaps. How much better would it be if we came together and expend that energy on designing and developing our own solutions? I'd love to encourage and see more of this in the coming months. And there are some other things that come through very frequently in our discussions. Language, we love Welsh and most people are really committed to extending the use and love of our, of our beautiful language. But a huge part of the public sector in Wales can't easily do business in Welsh, which can be a challenge. And we're far from being adept at building bilingual services from scratch. It's not good enough to build and translate. We have to look at the differing requirements around languages and users and, and build accordingly. 
the Centre for Digital Public Service has been quick to pick up on this and is already working on it with a group of, in, of interested folk across the sector, but it really is something we need to put a lot more dedication into to make it work. And recruitment. Uh, we, we struggle with recruitment quite often across Wales and part of it is we put an awful lot of weight on experience and not enough on talent and potential. Recruiting based solely on what someone has done is recruiting for the past. I want to see us recruiting for the future, for the potential someone has to make a positive change and basically come to the Welsh public sector hungry to do something because I think we would all benefit from having more people with, with that hunger to change. And then we've also got a quadruple threat on the cards. COVID legacy, Brexit issues, austerity and the end of the furlough scheme. These could all signify a potential perfect storm of social care issues for Welsh local government over coming months and years. And we should all be concerned about that as it could be a real lasting damage done to our, our, our communities. Then just add in the stuff that the whole world is dealing with when and how to move to cloud, cybersecurity and the threat of ransomware attacks, making good use of data so we make better decisions and sustainability and, and making choices that satisfy a range of needs and, and not just user needs anymore, but environmental and ethical needs too. These are all really, really important. And, and as I said, they don't, they're, they're not just issues just for Wales, maybe the language ones. But there are many strategies and work plans being redrawn and visited across local authorities to acknowledge all of these things and attempt to deal with the challenges and opportunities at the local level. And the Welsh Government Digital Strategy for Wales came out a couple of months ago, and that set out an overarching and really clear direction of travel through a series of missions. There are six of them, digital services, digital inclusion, digital skills, digital economy, digital connectivity, and data and collaboration. And all of these resonate heavily across the local authorities. And authorities will have their own strategies based on their local knowledge and priorities, which are crucial to their service delivery. So it's important for my team to help support the digital strategy for Wales and the councils. In response to this, my team are currently drafting our strategy to join these together. We're taking the missions from Welsh Gov along with the priorities and drivers for councils and being a bit in the middle that translates and bridges them, sort of the jam in the sandwich or other fillings are available if you're not fond of jam. For local authorities, we've got to deliver on the strategy for Wales by utilising the best commodity we've got, which is local knowledge for local people. And that just got a bit legal gentleman. But anyway, it's true. It is the local knowledge of local people that is a real power that we have in local authorities. So the strategy my team has developed has really zoned in and pared down on all the knowledge we've learned and, and all of that data we collected and the aims for the future from authorities. We really do want to make sure we fit into, the, into that sweet spot of supporting the local government in Wales to deliver on their priorities whilst ensuring they're on mission with the, wide, with the wider Welsh digital strategy missions. So our three priorities are in no particular order, but the first one is really important to us and that's around human centred design. So not in the specific user-centred design discipline, which is massively important, but the actual whole person or whole family approach that is so important to people in Wales. We don't want to be seen as a series of transactions. We want to be seen as people with needs and worries and cares and hopes. When I apply for a blue badge, I'm, I'm not just getting a pass that means I get a parking space. It means I'm newly disabled or my child is or my elderly parents are. What else would it benefit me knowing when I come to the council? Where are the disabled parking bays in town? Or how can I get a curb dropped outside my house? Who can put up handrails at home or widen a doorway? Am I a whole person with needs or am I half a dozen transactions? Our service design needs to reflect the whole person and we're already embarking on a big shift towards this in Wales. And it's a tough, a tough challenge, but everyone is up for it. And we need to focus really on our, on our second element, which is data and essentially making better use of it. We have masses of data across local authorities in Wales. Granted, some of it is probably buried in systems and not easily easy to access, but that's not an insurmountable issue. What we really need is our people to be comfortable and confident in using data, bringing data sources together and turning it into actionable information. When you're swamped with data, it's not easy to see where it can take you. We're not data scientists generally, and we're service leaders, social workers, educationalists, planners, etc. We might not know what data we need yet, but we do know what things we're trying to change and what outcome we want to see and what intervention we need to make. 
that is our that is our way into the data that is how we can unlock the potential of data across Wales see a problem work backwards from it examine the data look at the trends and the correlations so we can stop it happening again probably one of our biggest challenges in Wales and the, the third element of, of our strategy is around capability Wales the capability in Wales and having the right skills to deliver what we need to deliver is a big challenge for digital and technology it's doubly compounded in that there's just not enough people to go around this is something me and my team are really getting to understand we're sweating the data ourselves and as we need to work out what the model might look like for Wales in the future across all local authorities and more importantly how do we start movement towards that now an obvious answer to that is work with raw materials we have now there are masses of talented people across our local authorities every day we're talking to people with ideas and suggestions for my team we are really focused on bringing these people together and sharing these ideas we've put on an extensive suite of training courses on a range of topics which haven't necessarily been on the list of local authority staff training opportunities things that we that we will all recognize on service design user research user experience design content design agile working all of the good stuff that that those of us in the digital world know all about but not necessarily on the the key list of learning for local authority teams so far we've had over 100 different people from across the local authorities attend one or more of the training courses and they are then able to take that back to their home authority and help spread the word. And we are all springing them back together to look at what next, what comes after the training, how do we expand those skills and use them for the greater good? And importantly, how can those staff go from this training to build an even more relevant skill set for the future? And one of the really heartening things I've seen over the last couple of months has been the support for meetups and collaboration and show and tells. When we first talked about setting up a structured set of talks and workshops, I was told by a jaded transformation lead that people just don't come. And I really felt for them. I've been there. If you build it, they will come is, is a pipe dream generally, but not in Wales. We've had meetups and show and tells on a range of subjects from using data to recruitment and from GSI mapping to automation. And we get in excess of 60 people at these events, many more than our wildest expectations. This just goes to show the levels of interest in our digital world, but also the commitment to learn and share that is alive and growing across Welsh local authorities. And you'd be pleased to know this is the last thing I want to cover today before people disappear to watch football. Um, where do we want to be and where do we need to be heading for the future? Why Welsh local government is so amazing, in my opinion, is because we live here. We're part of the communities we serve, as are our families and our friends. It's a commitment to deliver as much for them as it is for the wider citizenship. There's an inbuilt, uh, an inbuilt internal incentive that can't really be matched by external ones. It's imperative to improve the situation for people around you because they're just like you. This might not be unique to Wales. I certainly saw it in the Midlands, but being Welsh, I can feel it happening as much as I can see it. One of the real special things about working with local government is how close you are to the people. And I've worked on big projects in central Gov, some of which have far reaching consequences. But in local Gov, small changes can make huge differences to a person or a family living just down the street from you. You can see it happening and you can you know it's happening. And that's a tremendous reason for going the extra mile. And I think we should celebrate that more and tell more people about it. Your local council isn't just about a bin not being emptied or a Grand Canyon sized pothole that just appeared. It's about protecting the vulnerable, the people who can't easily protect themselves supporting the elderly to remain independent. It's about education, it's about care, it's about health, it's about well-being, it's about fitness and belonging. And it's about working with partners to help the whole of the raft of citizens too and helping to tackle poverty, homelessness, loneliness, isolation. Every single day in every single way is pretty much what I think the motto could and should be for local authorities because it's what they do. Every single day, every single way they do this stuff. So. Where do I want to see Wales and, and what does my job need to focus on? I said there's probably five main things, maybe a few more than five, but embracing the future and, and not fearing being left behind is really important. Be future ready and this kind of ties back to that, the earlier stuff I mentioned about working on the census and doing a lot of groundwork, building it before we built out the 2021 census offering. We put ourselves in a really good position to take advantage of new technology 
and digital tools being developed, some of which we'd never even heard of in 2011 because it simply didn't exist then. This pandemic has shown us that being prepared has gone way beyond what we thought a year ago. Our preparedness needs to filter through in all we do. On one hand, we need to have services that are sustainable in even the most challenging of times that can be changed easily to overcome the most difficult and demanding situations. But on the other hand, they still need to be simple, easy to use and familiar to our citizens. Being future ready isn't just about dealing with adversity, it's about grasping opportunity. And to do that, we need to be flexible, open-minded and willing to take advantage when it's offered. This lends itself to looking at different technology options as much as it does digital application delivery. We need to be agnostic and loosely coupled to systems and applications not embedded and entrenched if we are to make the best use of new things coming over the horizon. Second priority is we need to focus on being inclusive, not only welcoming, but champion equality and diversity with services that support and ensure we have something for everyone in Wales. Now remember those, those figures from earlier where I said they were important, that whether you're 20% of people in Wales with a disability or half a million people over 70 or 28% of the population who speak uh, English and or read Welsh, uh, who speak English and, and who speak and read Welsh and English generally, and irrelevant if you live in Cardiff or Powys or Pembrokeshire or Innismon, whichever LA you live in, there is a standard of quality in your interactions that you can be sure of, and there's a familiarity and a recognition that the services replicated across local government in Wales are hallmarked. This is a Welsh service. Wherever I am in Wales, I can be sure about what that service does and what I need to do to access it hugely important if we're going to level up around Wales and make sure that all of our services are of high quality. Number three would be taking and owning responsibility. Councils are responsible for many services. In Birmingham, the service catalogue exceeded 1400 services. In Wales, it's more than that. The pandemic showed those services changing and growing, and we all shoulder the responsibility of keeping services running in extreme situations. Success for me will be building on the changes made during COVID and not allowing us to slip backwards. The acceleration of flexible working, digital service provision and community su support have been phenomenal. We have a duty, a responsibility to continue to develop and enrich our society through the delivery of excellent services. It's a putting your hand up moment for councils across the country to say we are responsible for supporting the newly vulnerable, for making it easier for our economy to recover and grow and we will have a digital infrastructure that enables us to deliver on that responsibility. And number four is we, we must be champions of sustainability. I don't think anyone will argue that sustainability is the biggest challenge we now face. There's a quote from the industrialist uh, Joachim Zeiss who sums it up for me where he says, sustainability is no longer about doing less harm, it's about doing more good. And we are in a position to do more good. We have to develop our services to be more sustainable. We will, we will be reducing our digital carbon footprint by making the right choices. We will openly show our commitment to sustainable living a sustainable councils and we will be leading by example in this area whether this is learning from smart and sensor technology or by ensuring when we renew our internal digital technology we adopt carbon neutral or carbon reducing choices by default according to defra report in 2019 by making the right digital choices both at work and at home we we can help reduce the global carbon emissions by 15 percent by 2030 that's just nine years time and that's definitely an aim worth getting behind as a nation and number five is build on our trusted position. We are transparent in our decision making in councils. Uh, we, we put all of our meetings online and people can, can see uh, what we do and we're open to scrutiny and challenge all the time. But councils also have an immense amount of data that I mentioned earlier, but we use very little of it to, to, join, that, uh, to join together to, to give us really good understanding. We also don't share it amongst ourselves or with our elected members or with our citizens enough. And the ethical use of data is critical to the success of our nation. And, and success would mean we are sharing more data to enable policy making. It might not make decisions easier to make, but it will make them defensible and trusted. And we will certainly be sharing more with our citizens. I would love to work with the colleagues at Data Cymru and the Centre for Digital Public Service to produce a performance hub for local government at the very least, but with the pinnacle being one for Wales, asking our citizens what they want to see what they need to know and listen to them so we can supply information on which they can make informed choices. If we can do this, we could see a threefold outcome, being more transparent to our citizens, being more transparent as a nation, 
but also being able to help citizens make good choices. Those five things are critically important to Wales if we are going to move local government services forward and prepare for the future. There's also some underpinning that needs to happen, some groundwork stuff, because obviously the how is always tricky. Services need to be the best wherever you are in Wales, and there are several things we can do and are doing to ensure this happens. Consistency is really important, and through the Service Standards for Wales recently published by the Centre for Digital Public Services, we can all begin to work towards that commonality by adhering to these standards. And if there's one battle cry we hear time and again, it's why are there 22 of those? No, not, not 22 councils. People seem quite happy with the local government setup, but it's, tw it's 22 different versions of services, 22 individual contracts for service provision that we all use. Why not one national contract for Wales that can leverage a better deal through size and at the same time use the burden of procurement? For instance, why do we have a myriad versions of the same thing, not just across Wales, but actually in the council itself? For instance, booking systems, uh, booking a slot at the local rubbish dump isn't much different to booking a badminton court or a room for a kid's party. Yet we have a range of systems. Arguably, this doesn't even need to stop at local gov. The same could be said for any other type of appointment across the Welsh public sector. Having 22 different systems for regular everyday things, we dilute the impact of them. We're not all working to better the same thing. Imagine if we pulled together and designed the absolute best in breed for a booking system, and then we used it for everything that needed to be booked, just adding tweaks and fields as required. The development and the acceptance of that booking service as a gold standard for users would be immense. And even better than that, the design would be there for us to use again and again. We've also got the, the a new Local Government Elections Act coming into force next year. This is wide reaching piece of legislation with lots of activity for local authority, democratic service teams to work on. However, there are also some elements that aim to challenge us to raise our game on participation. How do we get more people involved in local democracy and decision making? How do we get 16 and 17 year olds interested in what's happening in Welsh politics? It's not a big leap to think that digital opportunities for engagement are going to form a big part of this in coming years. And working together across the councils and wider public service in Wales is our best chance of coming up with some of those innovative ideas. And another thing we will benefit from is putting our knowledge and skills on designing excellent services in either of our languages. I want everything to be the best. And I'm a Welsh citizen, so of course I do. And my colleagues who speak and write Welsh as their native tongue also want the same. Isn't that, it's not a nice to have, it's a fundamental right. And we have to work together to better understand this for the future. The amazing relighting of the Welsh language fire is underway. According to the language learning app Duolingo, which I use, I'm not very good at Welsh, but I do try. It was the fastest growing language in the UK last year, up 44% in 2019. 1.5 million people have started learning Welsh. And this is, this is a great stat. We are the third most dedicated language learners in the world. We put in the most hours and complete the most courses. Not quite as world beaten as we are with our vaccine rollout, granted, but still it makes us, it makes me mighty proud. And it means we've got to get better at designing our services because we could very soon be a truly bilingual nation. So to sum up, firstly, I have the best job in the world. The digital leadership and the chief digital officer ecosystem we're building has a clear role, a clear vision and immense political support and backing. And we, as in Welsh Local Government, are the best organisations to deliver for the people in our communities. And um, we're already working on things to move us forward into the post-COVID world. And all authorities want to do the best and be the best. And for me, that needs to be extended out beyond local boundaries. Wales needs to be the best as a whole nation. I think we've moved already from a place of competition to one of collaboration. And the next step is mutual understanding and support next level sharing, working in the open, buying and building together. And the working title of this talk was singing from the same hymn sheet. And that is exactly what we all need to do more of across Welsh public service. And as everyone knows, we in Wales are the best singers with all the best hymns. So just watch this space. We're going to get better. Jochen Thank you very much. 
deal and very anti Sam. Um, I would say that I agreed with everything you said until you said a bit about the best singers, because clearly you've never heard me sing. Um, I'll leave that one for another time if you're really unlucky. Um, but I did recognise so much in there, not just as somebody who's working and running a company in Wales, but somebody who's living in Wales, raising a family and using the services that you've been describing every day. And it feels like this is absolutely the time for opportunity. Um, yes, we have challenges, um, but the opportunity is the most important thing we're facing right now. Um, I had some questions to ask you, but actually we've got a few that have come up um, in the Q&A box. So I'd like to pick up on those. Uh, one of them actually is related because I was going to ask you a little bit about capability because you mentioned that a few times um, in your lecture this afternoon um, and how we build um, capability for the future whilst also bringing on people now to deal with the demand that Wales has. So the question we've been asked is, is very closely related to that. Um, it says, how do people with that interest and hunger to be a part of digital development in Wales, but perhaps don't have a lot of experience in the field, find opportunities to get involved and be part of making change happen? That's a, that's a really good question. And I think that um, it's, it's probably something we really need to work on. So I know that um, myself and, and Sally in, in the Centre for Digital Public Service, we've been having conversations around things like how hard it is actually to get into, into public sector and into digital and, and data jobs in the public sector because we're always asking for so much experience mm -hmm. and we don't actually make it easy for people to come in at, at a level and learn and grow. So things like um, you know, graduate schemes, uh, apprenticeships, or even you know some of those those really sort of clever things that some, that, that some countries have had lots of success on kind of hot housing people in a digital role uh, to give them lots of experience in a range of digital uh, in di digital roles so they can kind of work out where their their real niche fits and, and whether they're kind of a delivery person or a business analysis person or a user researcher at heart and i think we need to look at, at a way of doing more of that it's definitely something my team are looking at is how can we make an offer to local authorities in, in Wales, um, especially for the, those that people that are actually employed already in local authorities, to take some of them and do some of this hot housing um, into digital, in, in within digital skills and, and kind of digital, um, get some kind of digital practice, hands-on digital practice. But then also, how do we work with with the centre and with Welsh government to be able to really get people in on that first level in public sector. So what are the schemes that we can come up with? What are the opportunities we've got to tempt people in? Because what we really don't want, and I really, you know, it was a really sad story that, that Sally and I heard uh, when we talked to, um, it was the, it was people that had, um, it was actually people from the BAME community, but they had all graduated from colleges in Wales with really good degrees in software or digital skills or cyber all of the things we're crying out for and they literally could not get a rung on the ladder because we were we don't recruit at, at that level we were asking for people with 10 years experience plus and so we just have to really look at, at our recruitment and how we how we do that i think it's up to us i think it's up to that leadership that cdo leadership to make that change Thank you. And, and I believe I saw an advert for Digital Apprentice for Blind Eye Gwent Council recently. So great to see that happening across local authorities in Wales as well. So I'm going to go to another question that we've got from the Q&A here. Um, it says the ambition of getting a seamless service across all local authorities, excuse me, local authorities is laudable. How can you help to make it actually happen? Wow. Well, <laughs> how can we help? one of the first things is is I touched on is those standards so what what when we talk to local authorities now quite often there's a there's a disconnect between um they say things aren't necessarily interoperable or they're not they're not easy to share because we they use different systems and uh, they may have different formats of how they do things and one of the things we've talked about is is actually you don't have to change everything you do to make things work more fluently together. Part of it is being able to achieve a standard and to actually say, well, I'm gonna do it my way, but this is the standard that I'm gonna reach. And we should just, if we just agree on a few things that we do, that's the same, that hits the same level and hits the same up, we can already start chipping away at those things. And the first way to do that is to actually, and it, you know, this is one of, this is proper kind of a 
a, a weird way of explaining it for me but if you go down the, the whole like ice cream route love ice cream is great what we need to do is look at the vanilla things first what are the things that we all do that are very similar and are, are, are the same um, and if we take those vanilla activities those vanilla parts of our services and work to to make those more similar and work very very closely together then that's the first step on that rung you can then add you need to and add whatever other flavor you want afterwards but if we nail the vanilla then i think we're about to make inroads into that that cross wales thing and, and also we, we're already seeing that um is working together to solve problems together and again that's a huge leap too if you've got five six seven authorities coming together all with the same problem that say well we we don't want five six seven answers to this we want one that satisfies all of us again we'll start seeing that organic move towards working together and those seamless services well i think that word collaboration is used quite a lot isn't it um and it's not as easy as it sounds collaboration can be hard but the benefits you get when collaboration really works it's some of the things that are really going to help shift, I think, the way that services are delivered in Wales. I'm going to yeah, pick out no, another. Agree more. Sorry, Sam, gone. No, so I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. And I, and I think it's um, we we talk about it, and it's it's next level collaboration now. This is absolutely mutual support and and uplifting and and you know putting a ladder up for the for the people that may be a little bit behind and you know holding a hand out to take people with you is. It is much more than than just communicating and just engaging. This is proper, active collaboration now, um, and we are we are seeing it. We are seeing the, the start of that happening, and it is it's a beautiful thing. It really is great to watch in action. Um, one of one of the other questions that we've had come through here, and I am mindful of time because I publicly said on Twitter that. Um, we'd be finished with before kick off time. But there's some good questions in here. So I do want to stick with them if that's okay with you a moment. Um, so this question said, what is the current appetite across Welsh local government for user research and for putting the user at the heart of its digital service development? I think the appetite is really high. I think there's there's an incredible um understanding that that I think you know part of it is is, is the bump from COVID when you know people were really at the heart of the things we were doing um but actually there's also some learning of when you buy something and it's not the right thing it's generally because you didn't ask the right questions so actually you know talking to users and not making that assumption of what they need that's you know that's learned we've all learned that lesson um so it's definitely um it's definitely more at the forefront of the thinking in, in authorities now and we can see by um the people that have, that have done some of the training courses that that we that we arranged and actually who want to become practitioners in, in user research that this is a you know we, we're just fanning the flames now the fire's already been lit so I, I think there's a huge commitment to that um, and, and, and a huge commitment to put the effort in and not just necessarily talk to those people that authorities always talk to they you know they quite often they've got like community um groups and panels those people are already they're pre-engaged they already have something they want to say it's more about the people that aren't anywhere near that the ones that we need to go out into the communities and talk to and so there's a lot more of that going on i think if there's one thing that's currently holding us back at the moment is just lack of enough people to do it um and i think there's a there's a real um you know dearth of of user research um talent available in wales currently and it's something we really need to look at how do we tempt people in to um to working in wales because literally um it's a great place to work but also when you look at the work that the councils do it is so meaningful how do we sell that that meaningful work that council that councils do every day and so for me it's it's not the the, the, the desire is there it's it's do we have enough people to do this um, well, what we do the thing about is, oh, particularly for, you know if you get that talent keeping them in wales as well i yeah i think i think generally it's, it's a little bit of if you say to someone you want to work in a council they don't nat naturally think about um doing digital work um so i think there's part of that there's is the public sector exciting around digital and you know 10 10 was it you know 10 or more years ago we had gds uh, spark up in london and then um you know lots of central government organizations picked up on digital uh, but there's 
you know, very different being public sector and being in kind of in a digital role and then more exciting roles is it better to work in a startup or uh, you know when I'm I'm you know I've just come out of college and I've got a digital type degree do I want to work for uh, a county council in Wales or do I want to go and work for Google so you know we're competing and we, you know we are competing with with some really really big organizations but actually getting some public sector work under your belt and delivering in the public sector you will not you will not deliver in with harder challenges than you would in the public sector so you know these are these are really really good places to start careers and they're really good um that there's so much variety across and across the public sector i just don't think we're selling ourselves enough i, I think for, for me i'm not sure it's a barrier more of more than we're just hiding our, our light under a bushel and we need to do more to explain you know the amazing things that councils do and public yeah. sector does every day i think i think you're absolutely right and as i said if nothing else the last 18 months have absolutely proved that um look, that that leads me to finish up then sam i just want to say again to you um for for giving the lecture today and for your insights um thank you for everyone who's joined us today and for the comments and questions um if you know anyone who had wanted to join um and was unable to because they had other commitments this will be available um for you to watch at any time you choose um via the digi leaders week link so thank you all very much indeed.